This is 5.8a of algebra. So we're going to start talking about absolute value functions. And if you remember, we've worked with these earlier in the semester. Here's a simple one. y equals the absolute value of x. And if we start making a table, plugging in some values. If we plug in negative 2, remember the absolute value function changes a negative number and makes it positive. So negative 2 turns into 2. Negative 1 turns into 1. 0 is still just 0. Positive 1 stays a positive 1. Remember that absolute value functions only changes a negative to a positive. It doesn't change a positive to a negative. So if we plug in 2, we also get 2. So if we sketch this out, one one two two negative one one negative two two we get a v shape right so absolute value functions look like a v and so this is our simplest form but when we start putting numbers in there adding and subtracting numbers we can move our graph um, up down left and right or a combination of those and that's called a translation that's when you just shift your graph some direction up or down or left or right. So it's still the V, but it's just being moved from its starting point. So, okay, here's our graph of our plain one, our regular one, the parent function. Um, and now we're going to look at graphs where they move. So looking at this one, you can see that the bottom of the V is at 0, 0. That's the easiest way to tell how it's moved. So if we look over here, at this bottom, we can see that it went down 2. This one went down 2. If we look at this graph here, the bottom's usually there. And it's all the way up here. So we can see that it went up 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one went up 4. Now, when we're looking at when we're going to graph these equations, if it goes down, we're going to be subtracting. So this will be y equals the absolute value of x minus 2. When we're moving up and down, the adding and subtracting is on the outside of our absolute value function. So this one here, it went up 4, so this is going to be y equals the absolute value of x plus 4. So let's try graphing our own. So you can see they were given the graph y equals the absolute value of x plus 2. So the graph in black there is our regular one. Every point moved up 2. So, we have y equals the absolute value of x minus 7. Let's get a little bit more room for our graph. Okay. So I'll draw it in like this. I know we have to go down, so I'm going to stick my x-axis there. Okay, so usually it starts right here. So instead, I'm going to move down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right here. So you could use the method that the books use, the book uses, and graph the original one, and then move all the points up or down, right, depending on how you're moving. That's what they did here. Or, here's another way to look at it. The absolute value function, the slope of this line, is always going to be a positive 1. So we can move up 1 to the right one, up 1 to the right one. And this side is always going to have a slope of negative 1. So we can move up 1 into the left 1, up 1 into the left 1, which I personally think is the easier way to do it. So down here I'm going to move up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1. I'll go back to my bottom of my V, and I'm going to go up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the left 1. And there's my V. Now how many points do you think we need to use? Maybe 3 maybe five. Here's the problem if you only choose a random three, right? What if I choose these three right here? Well, I'll use a different color here. If I just use those three points, and I was like, okay, now I connect them. Look, now I just have a line. That's not what absolute value functions look like, right? They're a V. So you need to make sure in the points that you're choosing that you're choosing some on either side so that you get the V shape. And there's your homework.